I am here with Mog Morgan um, on My Magical Thing. And Mog, I know as dear friend and uh, great occultist, writer, practitioner, specialising in things like uh, Tantra and the magic of ancient Egypt. Uh, organiser of loads of conferences back in the day, host of the Thelemic Disco for many years. Peace be upon it. Um, anything else I should add, Mog? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. So, um, please may we see your magical thing, Mog? Well, my magical thing? Or should I just show you it first? Right. You see? Uh, oh, what well, shall I tell you about him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you recognise him? This is Set, you see. It's set. Uh, so, um, which, as you know, right? I kind of, uh, I suppose I'm kind of. Maybe you mentioned that I'm. Uh, I, I've got a sort of obsession, maybe, or a specialism, then, or a kind of well known as a, someone who's interested in um, in this particular deity, and. Um, I never really had a very good statue of set because they're not that they're not that widely available. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, I, a few years ago, as part of the research, about five years ago, I actually went to to Egypt um, to do some yeah, just a visit and to kind of do start doing some research and whatever. Anyway, <laughs> all sorts of strange things happened, I suppose. Anyway, I met I met a very good friend there. But I, I went to the I was in Luxor. I went to Luxor where you know where all the famous stuff is. Um, and, and actually, you better indicate if I'm going on too long. I don't think because quite a long story behind this this little oh, that's right. <laughs> You'll have to edit it down. Just so, crack on. You'll be right. Being the way I am, so I I went to the Valley of the Kings as one does, and. Uh, to visit the tombs and everything, especially maybe hopefully to see the tomb of Seti the first. Anyway, I, I, by the time I got there, I kind of I didn't know anything about it really. By the time I got there, I didn't actually have any money. Uh, I'd left it all in a hotel and everything because I, I didn't realise that it's, it's actually quite quite a kind of complicated business. Anyway, so I, well, it wasn't just that I found out that, but I, I didn't want to go into the Valley of the Kings through this shopping mall. Uh, which they sort of set up at the front. So I was look. I saw this gate. I thought, well, I'll go through that gate there. So what? Which is not supposed to. So I went to open this gate, and the, it wouldn't open. But the guy on the other side, oh, said, oh, hang on a minute, uh, and he opened the gate for me, which is quite nice. And that person turned out to be a very, very good friend. Uh, and I said, look, I, you know, you just I can't really afford to take on a guide and everything because I left all the money back in the hotel. The taxi would come and get me. He said, oh, he didn't care. Uh, so uh, he showed me around the, the place. Anyway, eventually, I've been there, but been back a f several, many times since then. Uh, I'm nice to, uh, to hold him. He's very, very nice. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, when you're a kind of magician and you're visiting a place uh, in, in, like Egypt or whatever, you never know <laughs> how much to tell people about your interest, do you? You don't know. I mean, if you say I'm into the god set or something like that, well, they can, they, they have heard of it and they can say, God, it must be a total weirdo, right? You don't even know if you can tell them that you're a pagan or a magician, let alone that you're into set. But uh, so it took a while for, we were friends, for me to kind of, he probably guessed anyway, but for, for the word, at first it was like, oh, you're a Sufi, aren't you? It must be a Sufi, which is a sort of blanket old term for people who've got slightly weird point of view. But in the end, they worked it out. Uh, and eventually, I admit, uh, kind of also admitted that I was into this God set, which, of course, I suppose, because we're talking about the Muslim community, uh, primarily in this area, you think that they would think, oh, he's the devil, isn't he? He's Iblis, the devil. You're a devil worshipper of some sort. But of course, even that, right, even if you said it was Iblis, uh, they'd, um, or Satan, or Shaitan, right, they, they wouldn't think... It doesn't have quite the same vibe there as it does in, in in the West, to be honest. It's more of a generic thing. And in fact, they work with, in that area, right? So this is the thing. The people who live on top of the tombs, basically, there's a village, an Arab village built on top of the tombs. And there have always been people who've lived on top of all the tombs in the Valley of the Kings. And basically, they've... 
uh, make their living uh, as they have for thousands of years by making making the things that go in the tombs, right? All the, they make the tombs and they make all the knickknacks and everything, and they've carried on doing that for thousands of years. So basically, they're the kind of ancestors of the people, and they're also kind of got a, re a slightly dodgy, unfair reputation as being people. They make you something. You won't be able to tell the difference, right, between whether it's real or not, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it will be real. The only way you could tell, so, you know, probably if you're a museum with a lot of money, you've got a million, a million quid, a million quid, you can buy a mummy, uh, a real one, on the black market, of course, right? So this gives you an idea of the value of these sort of things. So... And of course, if, when you've got that much money involved, it's sort of kind of like gangster land to a certain, to a certain extent, right? Because you know, there's serious money involved in all this trading of artifacts and stuff. Anyway, so either they'll get you the real thing. You're not supposed to say that. Uh, and if they're doing that, if they're looking for tombs, then they use, they invoke Shaitan to uh, a type of pharaonic Shaitan, a Shaitan from the pharaonic world to help them find buried treasure. And if they can't find it, they make it, yeah. And they're and they're the same people. They know how to make this stuff. Anyway, so there he is. He's set. And um, there's a very famous book about the area uh, called uh, Tutankhamun's uh, Neighbors, that I the people who live on top of his tomb now, even now. Uh, and it's and the, the guy it just says show the craftsmen who, who make these things, and that it's made by the same guy. Um, so that set, so he's 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 complete. I think he's completely authentic. And this thing is um, he's made of wood, incidentally. So it's wood carving, not the usual stone carving you get. Uh, and I think the iconography is spot on. The problem with a lot of Egyptian imagery that we have, as we, why it's so difficult to get an image of set. If you look at the images of set and the images of Egypt that people have. I'll put him down for a bit now, is it? Can you stay there? Uh, they tend to be a bit kitsch, don't you think? They can. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah. Be, no, they, they, it's nice. difficult to do Egyptian stuff. They've got a beautiful aesthetic without going into the kitsch stuff. The Egyptians did kitsch themselves as well, right? So I, I think he's wonderful. But he's definitely not kitsch. Let's, let's, let's just hold him up again. Let's have one more close little look at yeah. set. Thank you so much, Mog, for sharing your magical thing. A little bit closer. Come here, come here with your lovely pointy square ears. Do you reckon he's a giraffe or do you reckon he's something else? Anyway, he's amazing. He's a monster of some, oh. sort, some sort of doggy, monstery type thing. I don't know what he is. Who knows? Mog, Mog, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your amazing magical thing. Thank oh, you. Cool. All right, my friend, I'll see you later. Take care. And every...